Hi, this is PDF Bergsberg Arcade at bergsbergarcade.com and this is tutorial 245. Uh, we're going to be starting off looking at the Mob AI again and there's going to be quite a bit of things that we want to add to the Mob AI. Uh, but before we get started with that, I actually want to go back and clean up some of the stuff that we've actually done in the, uh, the Mob AI already. And well, let's just take it one step at a time. Uh, and let's just start off just by starting it up. Now, I've got my console here opened up. And uh, we'll notice right away that we have some debug statements coming in from uh, our, our PC class. And just to help uh, keep things clear on what I'm debugging, I'm actually going to go ahead and comment these lines out. They're just debug log statements. And we don't really need them right now. And it just keeps things neat, especially since I'm working with a lower resolution. Uh, I'm going to leave the one camera one in. Oh no, we're here. Might as well get rid of it. And of course I clicked the wrong one. Uh, this one here. And I'm going to hit clear because I do have an error now. Uh, well, it's because I got rid of uh, the only line in that if block. So we need uh, to show that there is something there. Okay, uh, camera scripts again, another thing that we'll have to go through. Uh, I'll just take a look at it when we get there. But anyway, I'm going to close that down, close that down. We shouldn't need this anymore. Uh, we have the mob AI script. Let's close all this down. We'll hit clear. Uh, it's going to tell me about the train toolkits. Yep, that's fine. Uh, I'll have to see if there's a new version of it, but it's not going to affect our program right now. So let's go ahead and I'm going to run up to one of the mobs that we've spawned. And uh, as you can see, I've added another mob here, the little green worm. It's uh, one of the free assets off the website. Now, it does only come with one animation, I believe. Uh, okay, so it runs in. It's coming to attack me. Uh, I run away. If I go far enough away, it should stop chasing me. And it seems that uh, I'm not fast enough. But if I go through the portal, it should run away. Uh, but the main thing I'm trying to get out of here is I want some debug log statements here just to know exactly what's going on uh, with the mob's AI. So I'm going to go ahead, open up the AI script, and let's just start going down. So here's the enumeration that we're using, and this is all the states that our, our mob's AI could be in. And when you kind of look at it, like, logically, you know, a mob should never be in an init or setup state. So you could technically remove these from our finite state machine and make them functions that just fire off when the mob first starts. And it's probably something I will do later on. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to leave it there because it doesn't really hurt anything. It, the way we have it set up, it is still only fired once when the mobs first started. Uh, simply because we start off uh, at the init state, run through, and the moment we get to the search state, uh, we never actually go back to any of these other states. Uh, we just keep cycling through these ones. But anyway, let's go ahead. We'll come down to the finite state machine. And, well, if we look at the start method here, it starts off in the init state. So if we come down, look at the init state, it runs through some initialization. I'm just going to leave it for you to uh, go back and watch the other video on how we set this up. Then it goes to the setup state. Of course, it's going to loop through, go to the setup state, run through all that. And then it goes to the search state. I'm actually going to shrink some of these down just to save some room on the screen here. And then we get to the search state. And, whoops, that's the setup. And in the search state, we I'm going to uncomment the debug log statement. Uh, all we're doing right now is calling move and then setting the state to be attack. And then attack calls move again. And then we're just calling retreat and we're calling flee. We're just calling these other methods just to show that they did work. So at the end, we're going to want to clean this up because we don't really want that kind of flow going on uh, where it keeps jumping around. We just kind of want to have it set the state it needs to be in and change as it needs needs to be. And if that's not quite clear, it will be by the time we end up with this little series done. But anyway, so I'm going to start off with the search state. Uh, shrink flee. Okay, we're going to be calling move. And whoops, I've actually gotten used to my magic trackpad. I'm using a mouse now, so my scrolling in my mind is backwards. But anyway, we come down to the move here, and the first thing I want to do is throw a debug log statement in here. And all I want to do is just state that, you know, I'm in the uh, move method. And 
And I'm gonna leave one line after this. I just quickly go through the code here. So I'm taking a look to see if I have a target. And of course I'm using that mouse again, so my my uh, scrolling is backwards on the mouse compared to what I'm used to. But anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and look at this uh, function. And it's basically saying if I have a target, uh, I'm gonna calculate the direction of the target. I'm also gonna calculate the uh, direction relative to uh, for the vector three dot. Then I'm going to calculate the distance, and I'm going to check to see if the direction of the distance is within what I want. And then I'm going to move forward, or I'm not going to move forward at all. You, you never move backwards, so you're either moving forward or you're not. And then down here, I'm also checking to see about the rotation, if I need to actually turn left or right. And we're going to be doing some cleanup here. Uh, there's a few other things I want to add in here, too. Uh, but also, there's another else block. Uh, let me see, where we just don't turn and we don't uh, move and we need this else block because uh, we're sending a, if you notice here we're going to the advanced movement script and we're setting uh, some uh, uh, enumerations over there as well and if we don't tell it not to stop moving forward your character is going to constantly keep running forward and same thing with turning if we never tell it to stop turning it just keeps turning but uh, we'll cover that um, down here's where we actually really start everything uh, if we notice here in the start method, when we first start it up, uh, we're just setting the state to init. And let's scroll down to init. Uh, it just goes through and initialize everything, calls the setup. It's in setup, I guess we do it. Yeah, so we set some stuff up, and then we're setting a live defaults and setting the state to search. And if we actually look at our finite state machine, which is called FSM, uh, it basically loops through while true, or sorry, while we're alive. So by setting it to false, we just never actually loop through anything. So let's go ahead and actually shrink this down. I'm actually going to throw a debug log in here as well. And I'm just going to say the function name and any parameters passed in, which there are none for this one. All right, so that should be enough. Uh, do I have something for trigger enter? Yes, I've already got something there. And I'm gonna clean this up a bit, just so I know exactly what function is being called. And for me, I usually like to put three stars, uh, the name of the function, so on trigger. Uh, we'll get that second G, enter. And like I said, if I have any parameters, I'll usually add them at the end. And we'll do the exact same thing with the exit, although we only actually need this called ever once. But we'll just stick with it. And all right, so I'm just going to leave it like that. This should give us enough of a, a cycle to see exactly what's going on. So I'm going to start it up, and of course, I get my warnings about my uh, the train toolkit, and I'll take a look at that out off screen that's has nothing to do with the tutorial series so I'm gonna go ahead and start my game up here I am uh, I'm running around uh, let's actually start off by looking at this now I know I actually have three mobs out there and I'm gonna get the script triggering three times because it's attached to each mob so it'd probably be a good idea to actually go and turn off a couple of the spawn points so I only have one and yep we see a on trigger enter uh, firing because it's connecting with something so I'm actually going to go ahead and do just that I'm going to come up to my spawn and ground uh, let's go to my spawn points I'm actually just going to turn two of them off and we'll just go like that like that hit clear go ahead start it back up I should only get one set now uh, I'm still getting three And even though I turned them off, it's because if you actually look in my... We don't actually have to turn these off. Let's turn them back on. It's in my mob generator. I actually have the spawn point set to three. So I'm just going to set that to one for now, and it's going to erase the other two. And of course, I really shouldn't have to hit clear, because I do have uh, clear on play clicked, but force a habit. So I'll go ahead and start it up. Now I'm only getting one cycle. Uh, it just keeps on trigger enter and if you want to know exactly you know what's it entering with uh, if we notice here I do have a, a, a uh, parameter up here so what I do is I just go plus 
And of course, you know, you could use the string format method, which is a little more efficient. Uh, but for my debug log set, uh, statements, I'm really not that worried about it. And I'll put that there. And we're going to concatenate on other. I'm not sure if I can get to the name here. I can get the name. So I'm just going to put out the name of whatever it is I'm colliding with. So we'll start it back up. And on trigger enter, uh, Dungeon Guardian and Dungeon Guardian clone. So let's stop this and um, see the collider is colliding with, ah. And what's happening is uh, when it first starts up, it's colliding with its own collider. Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual mob. This is not something I'm really worried about right now. It might be something we want to look at later, but I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, I'm going to shrink this up just so we have some room. And I'm going to go ahead and drag a Dungeon Guardian in here. And what's happening is uh, all your viewer colliders are going to have the exact same name as, as your, uh, uh, its parent or whatever you've named it. And we actually have two colliders here. If you look at it, we have the character controller and we actually have a sphere collider as well. Uh, when we start getting into layers and stuff like that, we can find ways to have it ignore each other. Uh, but again, that's something a little bit later on. Uh, but it, it is something to, to keep in mind and to actually take some notes on that. We're probably going to want to address that a little bit later on. But anyway, let's go ahead. We'll delete him. And just keep looking through here. So it starts up. And it doesn't actually call anything yet. So let's go ahead. Oops, I didn't mean to start it back up. What I want to do is go back to the script and actually just activate the setup part. Uh, just so you can see that setup is being called. And well, we'll do a knit too since it's only ever called once. And we do want to check to make sure that it is only ever called once. And we'll start it back up. And now you should get a different series. Uh, so it starts up the finite state machine, calls a knit, calls setup. Uh, then we have the on trigger enter uh, for when they collide. And that's it. All right, right before we end this video, I just want to quickly run through and just make sure that uh, all the other uh, methods are being called. And here's the one we did not delete. And I probably should limit it down to actually having the Dungeon Guardian just to keep the exact same mob. All right, so now it's calling move. And we see that it's jumping through the different types, move, search, move, search, and which it should be. Actually, if we pause it and take a better look at it, uh, it's going search, move, 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 search. Uh, we'll scroll up a bit more. So we're getting a search, three moves, a search, followed by three more moves. So this is something we're going to want to look at. Actually, I already know why it's going like that. And it's because if we actually come up and take a look, uh, like I said before, when we call move in the search, then we're setting it to attack. And of course that calls move, so we're getting this move down here again. So I'll uncomment this. I'm not going to save yet because it'll screw up Unity as well. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, we'll calling it down here as it was see. Uh, like I said, do not save this yet. Not while it's paused because it will probably crash Unity. Uh, well, probably won't crash Unity. It'll just crash the your game running and your game will stop. But let's go ahead, we'll unpause. And I wanna scroll down to the bottom. I'm gonna run through the portal since I didn't make it so that the mob's lower than me and I could run away. And we'll notice here if we just keep going, it's just gonna keep cycling through. And he's returning to his spawn point. And he's at his spawn point now. And I am gonna switch over to just only have one mob just cause it's easier to debug if if everything's the same. Uh, but anyway, he's still actually, his AI is technically still running and it shouldn't be. And uh, Once he gets back to his spawn point, we want it to actually turn off until we run into his collider again. Uh, so anyway, this video is already over 10 minutes. Uh, we're gonna address these things in the next video, or at least start in the next video. And uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.